But on today's episode, I'm going to be talking about the 2023 Sundance Film Festival that has happened over the last, I don't know, week and a half. Um, it was a festival that I got to cover virtually. Um, I am right around 28 films watched, but I'm excited to talk about some of the best of the fest. I am joined by my good friend from Candid Cinema, Miss Amanda. How are you today? Hi. Tired. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the best, <laughs> that's the best uh, way to explain our mood because we've been at home watching all of these films for the past nine days, ten days. Sure. However many days. Who it's, knows anymore? I've I thought today was so Tuesday. Many, I woke up so many days this week thinking like it was an extra day. And it's just... It, I was like, it's today Thursday? It's today Thursday? <laughs> nope. Two more was, days. <laughs> and it was like, oh my God. Like, Because every day you have an allotted amount. For those that you don't know, you have an allotted amount of movies per day. And some of us, mm -hmm. this guy right here, um, a lot of... It was very top heavy. You know what I mean? Very, very top heavy. There was like one day, nine films dropped. I was obviously I can't watch nine films in one day, but um, I think the most I watched in a day was five or six. I'm trying to remember. It was either five or six. And um, I did. Yeah. I remember you did six or seven yes. though. I think. I yeah. Think was, yeah. I think it was like Sunday where I just like literally sat on my couch the entire day and watched film after film after film after film. No stop. It was just, yeah, like it was like, all right, I'm going to eat something, but I'm going to microwave it and then just go right back to the couch. And That's what I did. I was like, I don't have time to cook anything. It's like sandwiches, snacks. Like that's all we're eating. For exactly. Day. It's like New Year, New Me died on uh, sun during the Sundance Film Festival. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some of our most anticipated, our favorite films from the festival, some big surprises, and our favorite performances, and then we'll get out of here. But that said, um, what were some of the films that before the festival started were you excited to check out? Um, I absolutely love Jonathan Majors and I think we do share that, uh, that love for him as an actor. So Magazine Dreams was like a day one thing for me that I really, really wanted to watch. Um, I love Michael J. Fox. He has been someone who just warms my heart. I remember coming home from school, watching Family Ties every single day because it was on reruns and it is just, he's my favorite person. Um, so still a Michael J. Fox movie was like day one type of, I'm watching, I need to get it done. Um, those were the two that I was really interested in. Um, I'm also a huge Alden Enrich supporter. Um, I unapologetically love Solo, a Star Wars story, and I think he's really awesome and he has the potential to be a really, you know, great leading man. So Fair Play um, was another one where I was intrigued. Um, even with uh, Phoebe Denever, I think I pronounced her last name correctly, but I loved her in Bridgerton. So I, I was just happy for like the one, the, you know, the actors that you love to see. So I just love seeing them do well. Uh, so those are the three that I was you know looking forward to the most magazine dream same like um you literally got one picture and to me obviously like you know when you look at the picture you're like oh my oh my god like it's great Jonathan. but what <laughs> i think i loved about the most was is like when you watched it like what that picture kind of means to the story like yeah. really just like divulged into more of what we'll talk about here in a little bit when it comes to the top five films of the festival but yeah um Magazine Dreams, Pod Generation, and Sometimes I Think About Dying were three films that I was really, 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 really intrigued by. Um, and you know what? I, 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 was, I was pleasantly surprised. Like, obviously, like you, I kind of gravitate to the films that I know the people because, yeah. you know, oh, yeah, like Jonathan Majors. Yeah, definitely going to be top of the list. I need to check it out. You know, Pod Generation, Amelia Clark is literally like the most charming person to watch on the screen. Is. And it's, yeah. she just lights up and then you light up because of that. So I loved her. Yeah. And then, of course, sometimes I think about dying, I thought had an interesting premise, whether it was with, you know, um, it didn't matter who was in it, really. I just loved the idea and the premise behind the film. But uh, mm -hmm. that said, um, I'm going to flip flop real quick. What were some of your biggest surprises from the festival? Oh, man. Um, uh, let's see here. I think... Um, Eileen 
was a surprise for me just because again i gravitate towards the ones we know and and hathaway um in that like blonde wig <laughs> her hair she looked really she, i don't know it was just like an alluring type of vibe you're obviously getting like a film noir with eileen um but after watching it I really enjoyed it. I liked where the story went. I loved her chemistry with Thomas and Mackenzie. Um, they had great chemistry, which I was just saying, they're like, what's going to happen with them next? So I was like really happy about that. But then the twist was awesome too. Um, so that one really surprised me. Um, Rye Lane really surprised me. I think that there were like whispers. You told me to watch it and I'm so happy I copped it like at, like one of the last days. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm a sucker for good rom-coms and that was one of them. So, um, I have seen a couple of docs. I, I think smokes on a sisterhood was really interesting. Um, it was kind of like a cathartic healing energy of just hearing women talk about their experiences in a sauna, literally just them without any men around, no one else just in seclusion, no offense, Ricky, but like, it was just such a, <laughs> it was just a, yeah, it, it was a calming, soothing thing, listening to, um, you know, just listening to them. Yeah. So like when I was, I, I'm glad you, highlighted some of those movies because like when I when I look at it, Rye Lane obviously floored me I had heard early chatter and then I reached out to you I was like hey have you seen you're like no I was like I've heard great things I watched it completely completely blown away um what blew me away the most I love the script the script is great but Rain Alan Miller's direction was just like perfection like the way she shot this to not just make the characters important, but also make the backdrop, the background, yeah. the music, the color mm -hmm. palette. Like it just was all put together perfectly. And mm -hmm. the other one um, is Talk to Me, the uh, horror film. I, I, I'm not a supernatural like horror fan at all, really. Like horror is just like, it's either like good or bad, right? You know what I mean? Like I, I yeah. don't love horror films like most people, but this one was was awesome. Like it was very, it was good. Um, I'm glad A24 bought it because that means I'm going to get a chance to see it hopefully on the big screen. Um, mm -hmm. And a film that I think that needs to be seen. I think this is going to be like a cult classic. I think this is going to make probably a lot of money. And I think That's a awesome. lot of people are going to love it because yeah. it's like, it really brings you back to your teenage. Like they do some stupid stuff. Like literally <laughs> it's about a group of friends that they can conjure up spirits using an embalmed hand. And you literally put your hand on the embalmed hand and say, talk to me. And like, it just overtakes you. Right. Oh, okay. Like, it, some people have talked about it, it's like kind of stupid. I'm like, yeah, but put yourself in that teenage. Like, if when I was a teenager, I would have been like first in line, like sign yeah. me up. Like, this is dumb and stupid. But those two films really kind of stood out to me. Um, and then I want to talk about our top five favorite films from the festival. Um, I there was uh, how many did you say you got? I think I got 28. Um, I think locked in from the festival. Um, I know you're probably close to that number. Maybe top I think. Number. Hang on, because I did five a day, so I could tell yeah. like, how many I did. Um, I think I did 30. There you go. One, two, three, four, five. I've got yeah. like I've got a few more that I haven't I, I I don't know. I'm working on it. You know, it's like one of those I'm working on it type of things. But um, but yeah, so that's that's exciting. Um give me your uh yeah. You know, I have, you, you have yours ranked five, four, three, two, one type of thing or? I, yeah, I do. I do. Okay, I did give me your five, four, and three. <laughs> five, four, and three. So I have in my fifth spot, I have sometimes I think about dying. That was a surprise. I really liked that, um, you know, we got to see an office environment that it's not like always fun. You know, I think that everyone's accustomed to seeing like Parks and Rec and like the off. Obviously they're like, you know, they're comedies but we never see an office environment that's like dull and you know you're you're just in a different headspace because of uh daisy ridley's character of fran and i think it highlights you know social anxiety and, and depression and you know intrusive thoughts that you don't normally see on screen and in an office environment you know it's very accurate because you're you drift 
you're daydreaming, you're thinking of other things. And I love that they filmed in a four, three aspect ratio because it felt like you were stuck in a cubicle with four walls the whole time. Like that is genius. Um, but it was just a really soothing film, even though that like that subject matter is not supposed to like calm you in a way. So it, the energy was really weird, but I respected it because it can resonate with so many people because of the, you know, the atmosphere that, um, you know, that was present. So that one was at number five for me. Number four was Rylane for everything that you just said. I thought the, you know, the camera angles, the flashbacks, the cuts to those flashbacks, it was really like quick. The banter is something that I absolutely love. And like UK slang is just everything, it's everything to me. And I love it so much. So the humor was spot on. And then um, what do I have? I have fair play. Fair play is at number three for me. I enjoyed it more than I did because I like when they explore like gender power dynamics within relationships. And, you know, it's a really sharp script. And we talked about it because things that are said in a, like a comforting, encouraging way in the first half of their relationship is like twisted and undercut and like they're like using that against the other person in the second half of this. And it's just wild it's it gets really dark um but i love the two of them together i think they did a great job and their chemistry was great denever and uh and rich i was really proud of them um but those are my th five four and three so my it's funny so far all three of the movies that amanda mentioned are in my top five as well um sometimes i think about dying is also it's my number five um one of the things that i loved the most about this is because you have um, you have so many different characters in this film, including Carol, right? We are introduced to mm -hmm. Carol very early on where it's her, it's her retirement. You're built like we were like, I wasn't like this, this generation's a lot different, but the generations, maybe mine and prior, it's like you go to work, you work for like 40 years, you retire, then you have fun. And like, that's the idea that everybody's life is built on. And obviously yeah. as, people like this generation get smarter. Like they're realizing that's a terrible thing. Like and we <laughs> even see at the end of this film where uh, Marsha Devonis, she delivers a just like one, yeah. thing. like this, like she's in the movie at the beginning, but like she delivers like this dial, this monologue that is just so gut wrenching and heartbreaking and so factual that mm -hmm. it just it's it blew me away. I, I love this film. Um, it's not an easy watch at all, but it's it's very essential to the understanding of like how society used to think versus I think starting society starting to turn to. Um, number four, fair play. Everything you said, it, it's it's yes. incredible. That script is just unreal. That's like awesome. it's. It's unreal. It's very divisive, and I, I get it in some aspects, but for me, the performances um, really take it over the top. Um, Chloe DeMont has something to say, and, yeah. and, and what she has to say is very strong. I also love the editing in this. The editing, mm -hmm. I thought, was pretty fine-tuned. Very crisp, crisp script. Uh, number three was Radical for me, um, nice. a film that floored me. Um, I saw this, I added this out of a recommendation opening night, um, very first night. I added it last minute, was surprised I could get to it. And it's raw, it's emotional, um, it's based on the true story. And it really highlights what teachers are willing to do for their students and, and that extra mile that they're willing to go. Um, Eugene Jabez is somebody that I love dearly. I felt like he was the best part of CODA. And Al Capuco, if you don't watch it, it's on Apple TV Plus. Highly recommend it. He's very, very quick with it and smart on that show. Um, I just think that the script and Eugenio Debez, it's just, I literally, the ending of it, if you're not crying, then I don't think you're human. Like, it's just, it's that kind of film. Like, it's very heartfelt, very heartwarming. I loved it quite a bit. Um, I think we have the same one. Um, what's your What's your number two? You're, you're, what'd you say? Sorry. Uh, I don't think we have the, the same one for that, but my number two is uh, still a Michael J. Fox movie. 
Oh yeah, but I think we have the same number one though, right? We have the same number one. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. My number okay. two. Is still just, talk, yeah. talk. I know you said you talked about it a little bit earlier, but still talk about it. Yeah, uh, like I said, Michael J. Fox has been in my heart. He's Canadian. Um, I love him. I love his attitude. I love his outlook on life. And, you know, I remember when he was doing Spin City and he came out and he said that, you know, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's. Um, and that was really tough for him. And we, you know, you don't know the extent of what, you know, celebrities also go through in their own personal lives and how they take on fame and how they take on like, you know, real life situations. Um, so the reason why I absolutely love this, it's like five out of five for me, one of the best docs that you will watch is because they completely captured the essence of Michael J. Fox. They made it very fun and entertaining and the combination of like footage from his movies and his shows being integrated into, you know, his everyday life retelling was so unique and then you have like reenactments that made it so like, much more powerful but you're interviewing michael j fox that's the person we want to see yeah. so i am all for celebrities literally being in their own documentary because i've seen a couple like um like pretty baby brooke shields and you know judy bloom forever those ones that have their subject in the actual documentary is something that I want more people to do because they're sharing their own story. We're here for them. You know, we're here for them to watch them, but I just thought it was just so fun and energetic. And then, you know, Michael just sat there talking about his Parkinson's, but he, you know, he couldn't, he, he, it's not like he wants people to feel his pain. He doesn't want people to pity him or feel sad for him. And he's still joking around. So the more normal you are with Michael J. Fox, the more like his spirit's going to shine through. And I think that that's what really grabbed me about this because on top of it being, you know, like flashy and moving around constantly and, um, and all of that, he's incredibly grounded in who he is. And I think that he went through such a tough journey. Um, and I'm so happy that he got a chance to tell his story. This is going to be on Apple TV plus. I don't soon, hopefully I think the next couple yeah. months, but. It just spoke to me. It was the best. I was blown away by this doc. Like it yeah. didn't make my top five, but it's easily one of the best pieces of film that I've seen. It kind of, it reminded me like this. Hopefully, this is like the trend. It kind of reminded you of like Selena Gomez's documentary, like these mm -hmm. these uh, larger than life characters being very vulnerable. Like within the first few moments of this movie, like you see this man fall. Like yeah. and you're like heart just breaks but like he doesn't want you to see him as yeah. what he is you know what i mean and but at the same time he doesn't let what is going on with him stop him from being the person yeah. he wants to be which is like inspirational as fuck you know what i'm saying like it really yeah. truly is like there was another one where like he fought like he just completely messed up his face and they're just dotting him up and he's just sitting there yeah i just fell yeah i just fell you know i bashed my head but uh, let's talk like, and it's like, it's so personable and so just raw. And I love the editing here because I don't love reenactments. I hate them in documentaries, Same. I hate them, but this was fantastic. Like Michael yeah. Hart's editing. It just, it's, I don't see how we're going to see four other better documentaries this year of why this wouldn't be like one of the forefront leaders of the Oscars and documentary feature next year. Um, my number two, Rye Lane. Yeah. Um, Okay. Rye Lane, I just, <laughs> I was blown away by this. Everything I've already said, the opening, the 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 lunch scene with with um that we get at the beginning of this movie with um Yaz and Dom and his ex girlfriend. That entire lunch scene is one of the most like it's, and I love the direction here because it's like pointed behind them in the faces oh, of his ex and his best friend who cheated on him with that ex like it's right there in their face and the way that they're talking yeah. and the way Vivian who plays Yas just shows up and just like whimsically put together these stories to really kind of help Dom in this situation oh my god it just was so amazing and then later on when the actual like they do the karaoke was brilliant and the score mm -hmm. and the music the vibes like it was just like 
if I could explain Rye Lane in like one word, it's just vibes. Like there's just it the is. vibes are just incredible. It's um, true. And it has one of, and I'm not going to say, obviously, because I'm not spoiling this for literally anybody, but it has one of the best cameos that you will ever, ever, ever see. And it's so funny because it's just the most random thing I've ever seen. But um, it was fantastic. Um, and then, of course, our number one, jointly together, I believe, is Magazine Dreams. Woo! Um, I, I, I have a... I have a lot to say about this movie. I have a review written. I haven't fully fleshed it out completely. I'm hoping it wins some sort of award so I can watch it again. Yeah. Um, it's one thing's for sure is it's a very divisive film already, but um, it's it's not an easy watch. Um, I remember sitting there watching it. And there was several scenes where I just was kind of like holding my breath because of what was happening. Um, there's definitely a a play to the idea of of um like if you ever listen to the song stain by eminem like stand by eminem like it's it's got bits and pieces of that in it because he writes to his favorite bodybuilder um but how it kind of depicts like you know chasing our dreams being obsessive with chasing those dreams and and it's just oh, man I don't know. I love this movie. I do. It's, it's Jonathan majors. I I've sat here and looked at like all of the nominations for like the last decade. I think this would be like a top five performance of the last decade for me. Like I cannot believe what he gave to, he gave everything to he this did. performance, he like did. everything. And like, I would, like, if I would have been his, like, I would have mentally checked in on the guy. You know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah, like, it's, it's, I don't know. Like, it's so dark. Um, like, people were like, it's got ideas of, like, Taxi Driver. It's got a little bit of Joker. It's got a little bit of, you know, everything in it. And it's, but at the same time, it's its own entity. Like, yeah, it's strong. I completely agree for me it was just like anxiety inducing oh my god and to be placed in that mindset I've, I've i'm someone who's struggled with body image their entire life um so his unhealthy um connection to food is the first thing that i was like i was locked in on um and that's what really got to me majority of the time and then you know we've never seen a film explore bodybuilding. I personally don't think we have to this extent. And nope. then what I liked is that they, they kind of worked backwards with him yeah. and his, you know, his mental health and how that affects literally ev everything that you put into your body affects your mental health. And, you know, he didn't, he needed to have a paternal figure. So he, creates this like godlike person in the bodybuilder that he wants to become and then that like you said that becomes this obsession you know and it's very unhealthy the lengths that he goes to but because he's so unpredictable the whole movie was unpredictable and yeah. for me that's where the stress came like i was yelling i was like clutching my hair sitting back like this i'm like what is he gonna do don't do that don't do that. like it was me being so invested in this character because like you said jonathan majors is like unhinged in this he goes there he takes it and it's it's so heartbreaking at the same time even though you're looking at him like but you're why are you going this far there's a there's a point where you can stop you don't have to cross that line and you really do feel for him. It's just a really weird back and forth because you're scared for him, but you're also scared of what he's capable of. So I thought that that was brilliant. Um, and the one movie that I could kind of compare this to as a feeling wise is definitely Uncut Gems for me more so than, um, you know, Taxi Driver and Joker. I understand the comparisons for that, but the feeling... Lord, yeah. I was sweating. I was literally sweating watching Magazine Dreams, but he was a knockout, complete knockout. Yeah. It's 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 crazy, like how good it is, and the yeah. ending. Um, I loved it. Um, like it's crazy because you know you watch this character really fully develop throughout this entire film, and and obviously not exploring what happened, obviously because we're not going to spoil that for you. But like yeah. 
you know, the realization that he comes to at the end of this movie really brings the full film full circle. And, yeah. and it's just, ah, man, it's just so good. Like, you know, I, there's a scene where he gets beat up and then has to go perform on the stage. And it's one of the, it's like one of the best like five minute sequences that I think I, I just, the facial expressions, the pain in his eyes, um, like it's just I talk about this like I can't like it's I really want to watch it again but at the same time it's yeah. like oh my god my anxiety is going to be through the roof watching it's it it's hard but it's like you said the ending is just so rewarding yeah because yeah. there's this level of like hopefulness for everybody and I think that that's what's just so beautiful about it at the same time so good so so yeah. good um <laughs> Before we go, obviously, we're going to talk about some of our favorite performances. Um, I've obviously touched on a few of mine. Jonathan Majors, we've talked about him now. like you know, And then, of course, um, Eugenio Derbez, I talked about in Radical. I really loved both performances in Ryan Lane. Um, yes. Fair play, incredible. Mm -hmm. um, what I want to point out is I know a movie you didn't love as much as I did, I don't think, but Shortcomings. I really enjoyed Shortcomings. Um, but Sherry Cola was just a delight in shortcomings uh i just love i love the like the perception between like ben and alice in that film like they were best friends right you know what i mean we don't always get best friends that are in a movie together that don't have to have sexual attention like you don't like for some reason every girl and boy that are best friends have to have some yeah. sort of weird sexual they don't and there's obvious reasons why they don't but it's nice to see that a male and a female could be in a movie together and be best friends and it not be weird. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. the way Alice calls Ben on his shit is just hilarious. It's so good. <laughs> and and Cola really is great in that movie. Is there anyone that we haven't talked about yet that you would like to highlight? Uh, I'm just going to reuse Anne Hathaway in Eileen because, listen, it was such like an alluring performance. I don't know what, the second she came on screen, I'm like, who, who, which Annie is this today? I was like, what is this? I was so like invested. I'm like, this woman, she looks so good. And just her entire demeanor in Eileen was absolute perfection. So I love her in that. I also want to give a shout out to Daisy Ridley because even though there was minimal dialogue, I felt for her, like it broke my heart watching that movie. And I think that to do that, to evoke that kind of emotion with minimal dialogue, says a lot about her performance and her capabilities. So I am going to shout out to her. I didn't love um, Eileen, but what I did love about it was Anne Hathaway. Like it was like something we had never seen from her before. Yeah. And that's what I think I loved about the most. That's what really kind of kept me wanting to watch the movie. Um, yeah. But gosh, she's an incredible actress. She's just, she's such an incredible actress. And I, yeah. there's certain, like, when you see people like that, Anne Hathaway's not in a million movies a year. So, like, whenever you do see her pop up, it's it's pretty awesome. Um, but, yeah, so, Amanda, first off, thank you for joining me. Um, yeah. If you could just let everybody know where they can find you before we go, that'd be great. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. It's always fun with you, Ricky. Uh, you guys can always follow me over at AMX NDA Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. You can check out my website, Candid X Cinema, and my YouTube, Candid Cinema. Um, I just want to thank Amanda again for coming on the show, and I'll talk to you guys next week.